Hello and welcome back to the Linux Crash Course series here on Learn Linux TV, a series where I teach you, well, what else would I teach you on a channel that's all about Linux? I'm going to teach you all the Linux related concepts that you need to know to be a real Linux administrator. And I do so in this series, one video at a time. Today's episode brings us to the cut command. The cut command is described in its man page as a tool you can use to remove sections from lines within files. And yes, that is true, that is what the cut command does, but that's an overly simplified description. So what I'll do in today's video is show you how to use the cut command. But before I get into that, I need to take a moment and mention the sponsor for today's video, Akamai Connected Cloud. If you're looking for a cloud provider that's affordable, flexible, and reliable, then look no further than Akamai Connected Cloud. With Akamai's cloud platform, you can spin up Linux servers quickly, and the platform contains all the features you'll need to deploy full-featured solutions. And using the marketplace, you could easily deploy applications such as Nextcloud, Rocket Chat, Mastodon, WordPress, Pi-hole, Plex, Jenkins, and many more. In fact, there's over 100 applications available in the marketplace. If you want to set up a custom Linux instance, you could do that too. All the popular Linux distributions are available on the platform, including, but not limited to, Debian, CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu, and many others. In fact, even Arch Linux is available. So check out Akamai Connected Cloud with the URL that you see on the screen right now, which will do two things. First, it'll help support this channel, which I'll really appreciate, and it'll also get you $100 in starter credit to check out the platform. And thank you so much to Akamai yet again for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. And you know what? I'm really excited to dive into this command. So let's do it. Let's dive into the cut command. And by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to use it. And to help us along, I've created a very simple text file. And this text file I've used in another video. So it might look familiar, but I'm really proud of this one. Not proud of the text file itself, but I am proud of what the text file contains. Anyway, I called it message.txt, so let's take a look at what that file includes. And here's what it says. Learn Linux TV has recently reached 300,000 subscribers. Wow. And that's true. The channel has indeed reached 300,000 subscribers. Now, to be fair, by the time I get this content edited and out to you guys, I might be way beyond 300,000, but I'm very proud of that, and I'm very thankful for you guys for helping me achieve that. But actually what I'm going to use that file for in particular is going to be the next example. So what I'll do is type it out and then I'll go over it. So I'll type cut with the option dash B as you see here, the number one and then message.txt. What do you think is going to happen when I run this particular command? Well, let's find out. Well, it gives me an output of just L. So what exactly happened? So what happened with this variation right here is that it printed the first character of the file, which is indeed L. Dash B is just one of several options that you could use with the cut command. And these options will help you determine how you want to select text. Other options include, but aren't limited to, dash C, dash D, and dash F. When it comes to dash C, that allows us to select by character, dash D by delimiter, and dash F is by field. We'll go over these options shortly, but for right now, just keep in mind that dash B is one of several options you can use with the cut command. And before we move on, let's, well, explore dash B a little bit further to make sure that we fully understand what's going on. And in the next example, what I'll do is show you how you go about selecting more than just one character. So again, here's the original message file. And what I'll do is type out the next example, which is going to be cut, big surprise, dash B, we're still working with the dash B option. And then what I'll do is ask for a few different bytes here, specifically seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. And I'll again use the message file as an example. Let's see what happens. And as you can see, it prints out the word Linux. And before I explain that further, one thing I do wanna point out is that was not the most efficient way of doing that. What I could do instead is type a range. I don't have to call out every single number in between seven and 11. If they're sequential, I could type seven dash and then 11. And that'll give me a range, which is a lot easier to type. 
And of course, the output is going to be exactly the same. I'm asking for the same bytes, just in a different way. Now in this case, if I was to count out each and every character from the left to the right with the original message, then Linux is going to consist of characters 7 through 11. Now I didn't ask for characters, I've asked for bytes. But in this case, either way, dash B and dash C will give me the exact same output. And to prove that, I just change the option to dash C, and it prints the exact same thing. So when I type dash C, I'm asking the cut command to return certain characters, and the characters that I'm asking for are characters 7 through 11, and that's where the word Linux is. Now when it comes to bytes, I've also asked for bytes 7 through 11, and that works because every character is one byte. So regardless of whether I'm asking for characters by bytes or by characters themselves, it's basically the same thing. Now, if every single character was always exactly one byte, then it really wouldn't matter what you use between dash B or dash C. For the most part, the majority of characters that you might ask for are going to be one byte, but some of them are more than that. And that's especially true if you type in multiple languages. There are certain characters that might be, well, two bytes long, and if that's the case, then it's going to throw off the output. With dash C, we're asking for characters specifically, so regardless of whether a character is one byte or something else, it's still going to return the same information. So if you're trying to return characters, you should probably use dash C, but if you are interested in bytes, then use dash B. Now we're going over the cut command, so what we can gather from what we've done so far is that the cut command is going to enable us to cut a file down to, well, whatever we select. And that is what it does, but I think the use case for cut is going to become even more clear as we go along with additional examples in this video. Now another thing that I'll show you is that you don't have to commit to just a range or individual bytes, you can combine both of those. So in this case, I'm using the cut command to select bytes 7 through 11, byte 56 by itself, and then bytes 57 through 61. And when I press enter, watch what happens. It prints Linux, wow. And with that example, I created an entirely different sentence. Well, almost. Bytes seven through 11 contain the word Linux, just like we've covered before. Character 56 happens to be a space. And characters 57 through 61 consist of the word wow with an exclamation point at the end. Anyway, what I'm doing here is I'm using the cut command to select different parts of the file, and then by doing so, I was able to create Linux WOW, just like that. But that goes to show you that I could call out a range or a single character or some combination of that as I see fit to achieve my use case when it comes to the cut command. Now let's go ahead and see how you go about splitting a file by field. But what exactly is a field when it comes to the cut command? Well, what I'll do is type out the example. I'll use cut yet again, dash F for field this time around. I'll request field one as well as field two. And of course, I'll work with the same exact file. And let's see what happens. Now, the thing is though, that might not have worked the way that you expected it to work. You might've thought that this was going to print the words learn and Linux, you know, fields one and two, but instead it printed the entire message. So why didn't that work? The reason why the entire line printed, even though we only requested the first and second field, is because we haven't set what's called a delimiter. A delimiter is a special character that we can pass to a command like cut, and this character tells cut how to differentiate fields. By default, it's going to consider tabs as the delimiter, but we haven't added any tabs to this file, so the cut command thinks that there's only one field in this file. However, with the dash D option, we could change the delimiter. So here's the previous command. And right before the dash F, I'm going to type dash D for delimiter. And I'm going to set that to space. I put double quotes around a space to identify that the space character is how cut should differentiate one field from another. And now we get what you might've assumed we would have received as output with the first example, by using dash D, I've changed the delimiter from the default of the tab character to a space, as you see here. 
And now the cut command is going to think every single word is its own field. Now, as fun as that example may or may not have been, it's definitely not the most practical example. In fact, it's not practical at all. When it comes to the real world, why would you consider using the cut command? Well, what I'll do right now is show you an example that might help you understand that. Now on Linux systems, we have the Etsy password file, password being abbreviated in this case. And as you may or may not already know, this file contains a list of user accounts, their default shell, home directory, user ID, group ID, things like that. Something I've covered in other videos on this channel. But we have a lot of information here. So what if I wanted to carve out this file by using some sort of delimiter and select a specific column? Well, the cut command is a really good command that you could use for exactly that use case, so let's do it. So what I'll do is type cut dash D. I want to set the delimiter just like before, but this time I'm going to set the delimiter as a colon, just like you see here. And then after that, I'm going to select the first field, field number one. And I'll do that with the dash F option, just like before. And then I'll run that command against the Etsy password file. Now you definitely don't want to make any changes to the Etsy password file. I just wanted to let you guys know, if you didn't know that already, we're not going to make any changes to it. That wouldn't be a good idea, but it's fine to use that file as an example, so long as we don't make changes to it. Anyway, I'll press enter. And I'm only seeing the username. For each and every single line, it's only giving me the first field. Since I set the delimiter to colon, and that's the command that I used right there, then it's going to consider the appearance of every colon to be a marker for the end of a field and the beginning of the next field. And that's what a delimiter is. And this is not the only command that you can use a delimiter with. There's other commands as well. There's also videos for those commands. So the idea behind a delimiter in this case isn't any different. It's just how we tell the command here to separate fields. So in this case, we're seeing the first column, which just so happens to be for the user account. Now, up until this example, each of the examples that I've gone over were done with a file that had only one line in it. And that's not really all that common, is it? Most files exist to store, well, information, and it's just not common for there to be only one line of information. And considering that the cut command works best with columns, I think the Etsy password file is a better example anyway. It has, well, a bunch of lines and several columns. So it's a really good fit for this command. Now, how would you alter the cut command to take into account only one specific line? Well, I could show you a way of doing that, but it wouldn't make sense because that's just not a good use case for the cut command. I mean, sure, it was great at the beginning of the video for the examples, but in the real world, the cut command is going to be used against files that have more than one column, similar to the Etsy password file. So cut is just not a good use case for a one line job. But if you wanted to trim a text file by byte, character, or field, then the cut command is a great fit for that. And now you know how to use the cut command. Now, most often you're probably going to use the cut command chained with other commands. You are least likely to use it by itself. Like the TR command, it really plays well with other commands, like the Linux way. You can almost always chain one command into another. That's just how you do it. And with a cut command, you have yet another option when it comes to manipulating text. Now I have some awesome videos coming very soon, so make sure you're subscribed to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next video.